Hello everyone, my name is Elliot and welcome back to Hush Hush. So, we're on day 25 of July, six more days until this game ends. And, uh, Sonic's right here on top, sitting right against a cane of nice fresca. So I skipped over day 24 because uh, there was a bunch of, uh, there was a bunch of, uh, Fumi uh, love making. And, uh, <laughs> Now we are going. Now we have a Mio date to go through, and uh, she also mentioned that. Um, Fumi also mentioned that uh, the this familiar cartel has been targeting Hiro's family for years, and now they're gonna double down on her soon. So we gotta find a way to stop it. Just hope. That's all I can. Anyways, what am I talking about? I'm being in character. Alright, so... Morning, we can choose whatever. Beach will give you 5 plus buff. Where am I right now? At buff. 65 buff. I'm okay. Let's go, let's go downtown, shall we? While walking through... While, oh my god. While walking through the rough end of town. You see the usual sad sights of homeless beggars, a woman standing on the street corner, and bu a building with broken windows. That's scary. Sound of motorcycles ripping at full speed, engines revving, and the screech of tires. You walk to the edge of the island and peek down. <laughs> Spot two people on sports bikes in full riding kit, and one of them you recognize instantly. It's Hero, and as if like you, she removes her helmet as though to confirm it. Ha! <laughs> That's three for five, buddy! You owe me 900 bucks. Damn it! How the hell do you keep beating me off the line? Your ride is sickly compared to what I got between my legs! Hey, look, it's this... it's this fuck. It's because you haven't got any heart, dummy. Let me guess. This is your first crotch rocket. You went to some dealership, dropped a ton of cash on it, and hoped to impress the ladies by showing up everyone who can't front the cash for a ride like this. Only the shitty part is, you can't fake experience, or a love for the machine. Me and this baby, we've been all over the state. I work on her with my own two hands. I pop wheelies and pull stoppies for breakfast. So, your game is weak because the rider is weak. I saw you wobble a bit on start. Go practice more and stop letting the machine do all the talking for you. The delinquent looks like he's going to boil over, over mad for a moment. <sighs> brutal. The truth should be brutal, so you can learn. Now, unless you want to double or nothing, I'll be heading out after you pay me. Yeah, I'll pay. If you can catch me. But the liquid suddenly drops his bike into gear and speeds off. The summon is still attached to his handlebars. Come on, man! As he was pointing out her helmet to give chase. But the liquid rips towards you at top speed. Gotta do it. I believe it will perch by at top speed. Get through the river. Driving up at top speed right after. Blurry this. And you can tell by her reaction that she sees it's you. <coughs> hey! Can't talk! Gotta chase! Nice to see ya!
Ah, uh, I thought she would make a mean remark to me, but okay. Anyway, <laughs> go to the mall. There's nothing we can do. Uh, um, go to the mall. Something draws you to the mall today, although you really wish it wouldn't. Since half of the stores are closed, it's easier to see how soul-sucking it all is. Nonetheless, you park your car and go running through the flooded parking lot, getting your pant legs wet. Ooh, boy. Oh, my volume's up. Shit. I think that's good enough. You wander fairly aimlessly for a while. When you decide to make your way over to the cheek to cheek, just on the off chance that Eli is around, you see that the shutter gate is partially open. You get closer and see Cassie step out of the store. Someone you don't recognize is showing her out. You get a little nervous and decide to brush her. Here, let me get that for you. You reach over and lift the shutter up another foot to make it easier for her to leave. It's surprisingly heavy, not being, not being meant to move without electricity, but you manage it. Cassie looks up at you in surprise. Oh, hey! It's you! Hi! Hello there! Just a sec. She ducks her head back into the store for a moment. I can go now, yeah? Okay, see you another time. What are you doing here? This place is a wet blanket with the storm raging outside. Just walking. Sorry, your pretty face. Wanted to hear that pretty voice. Oh, you sweet talker. I could listen to your random compliments all day. Truly. No, I just had to drop by the boutique and a few other stores. And with it being less busy, now was the perfect time. Hmm. I just had to talk to some people about stuff. Tell me, girl, you, you know you can trust me. Yeah, you're right. I just stopped by some places today to return a bunch of stuff. I heard Eli got into a bit of trouble for missing inventory, and I felt really bad. And after everything else, between you and me, well, I just wanted to make it right. So, I called up the head office and told them I would be coming in to return stuff. And they said they wouldn't press charges if I did. So, yeah, I did that. And now I'm super embarrassed, but... Aww. Where should let's go? Oh, hey. Just... Thanks for being there for me. You're good people. I'm glad I ran into you here and told you. I feel like I've got a huge weight off my chest. Anyway, I should split. See you again soon. Take care, sweet cheeks. She walks off turning and wants to wave goodbye, then disappears around the corner. Make your way back to your car, your feet getting a fresh dose of parking lot pool water. Ew! Then you head off to continue the rest of your day. Mio's house! Oh boy! Yep, it's uh. It's Mio time! Last time I saw Mio was like at a vineyard. Now, and uh, there was a live stream that she did. Which I did off camera, same as for day 24. Now for day 25, we have this. So, let's do it. Parking up the street, you make your way through several small parks, small park areas on the way to the front door of Mio's apartment building. Yeah.
You hear a roll of thunder in the distance, though the clouds must be still, must still be far off. It's almost sunset, and the sky still looks clear. That's good. As you duck between a line of hedges next to the building, you hear someone calling for you. Hey, asshole! Who goes there? You see a man you don't recognize. He's smoking a cigarette while his left hand is favoring his hip. He may be armed. How's it going? You know who I am? I should save. Right here. Uh, you look familiar? That's right. We've seen each other around. Our paths have crossed once or twice. Name's Harris. And you and me, we've got some business to discuss. I want you to listen, and listen close, because this shit ends now. I'm tired of seeing you pawing at my girl. Who the fuck do you think you are? Rolling into town, putting your nose into another man's business. Mio is mine. You have one chance to back off before this shit gets real. Man, I don't want any trouble. I didn't know you, and Mio had a thing. It's way too late. Trouble's here. Now it's just a matter of who gets hurt. Because I'd hate to think how Mia would react when she finds out that she's nothing more than a side piece. That's right. I've been looking into you. I know you're fucking that rich, pink-haired bitch. I know you're fucking that blonde trash downtown. In fact, you've got quite the harem around Sabrosa. Well done. Sounds like you got game. But I will fucking ruin you. I'll send Mio every frickin' detail. You're done. Walk away. Text Mio you'll never see her again, and block her number. And don't you ever go near her again. Do what you gotta do, Harris, and I'll do the same. Hmm. Harris fumes it for a moment, his anger and frustration twitching at the corners of his expression. Finally, he stands straighter, adjusts his jacket, and growls a frustrated sigh. You're gonna break her, then I'm gonna pick up the pieces. So, thanks for the in. I'll pour one out for you when I'm nailing her in a week. Harris lights up a new cigarette and walks away. He put Mia's apartment number into the lobby intercom. He rings a few times before she answers. Hello? It's Mio. Leave a message after the beep. <laughs> no, stop! <laughs> Don't finish that message. I'll let you up. Let's not say things we can't take back. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay, that was pretty funny. I'll buzz you in. Okie dokie. You make your way through the halls, the potent smell of garlic and barbecue and other suppers being cooked all mixing together, that is, that being heaven. <laughs> that's a heaven, that's a heavenly dinner. <clears throat> when you reach Mia's door, it's already open. Don't wanna let Harrison, Mia. Come in. Hi <laughs> babe, how are you? I was missing you today. Mostly because I needed something off a tall shelf. I hope you brought your game face and your comfort blanket, because it's gaming night and I'm going to wreck you. Uh, Here, play this. I checked your most recent stats. You, can, you, you have nothing to fear. Oh, sounds like someone's been doing their recon. But I've got moves you've never seen. That's why I don't play friendlies. I have yet to release my true powers on a civilian target. 
And this isn't this isn't even my true form. Okay, pizza's ordered. No contact delivery. Loser of the first match has to run and grab it in cosplay. I've got a zero suit with your name on it, so you'd better try your best. I figured to warm up, we'll play a little Cheerio Kart. Something even children can play and win at. Play on even ground. <laughs> Look at that. I never even noticed that little... Uh, what... What's his face? <laughs> Damn it. Uh, cabin Fever uh, cameo. And then there's the clock. Of the logo for the game, I should say. Is that an off-brand Wii Wheel? <laughs> If it is, then that's cool. You better watch it, though. I bring those blue sparks. Oh, yes. Mario Kart. I might just play some Mario Kart music. I might just throw the game. I wonder if we can put together a triangle face cosplay on short notice. <laughs> you creep! It's sad, because I actually have the sexy scary nurse cosplay, but you had to go straight to triangle face. Well, now I'm extra motivated to win. I'm not in shape enough to pull off a triangle. <laughs> Alright, ready to play? Here we go! Play to win! Oh. Voice crack. Jesus Christ. Darn stupid blue lemons! I can't believe I was right at the finish line! <laughs> good game, good game. Ah, I love it when the races are that close. Paints is not here yet. Shall we make it a best of three? Or five? Nice, it's the hush hush theme. <laughs> I need to pull, pull it out. It's Cassie's name on the pic and on the screen. Her name is still. The bruh. My thumbnail is still. Horny weirdo. He has bosses and for a moment looks surprised. She turns away quickly and looking. Itch! Pause game. Sorry, I need to answer this. Oh, yeah, uh, of course. Please go ahead. Mio gets up and leaves the room. Once she's gone, you swipe your phone to answer the call. Casey's voice is on the other end before you can even say hello. She's... Hey, it's me. I'm freaking out here. And I didn't know who else to call. Some bad shit is going down right now. I got pulled into a meeting and torn down. My boss is furious. The questions didn't make any sense. I'm really afraid. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but someone fucked up, and I might catch heat. What do I do? Stay calm. You're fine. They're just shaking the trees and seeing what falls. If you know nothing, if you know nothing, you're safe. Yeah. Okay. You're right. They're just putting the fear of God in everyone. Just seeing who cracks. <laughs> Nothing to crack here. You hang up the phone and put it on silent. That's what I do with my phone all the time. <laughs> Abs... Abs... Absent-mindedly, you start selecting and deselecting characters, trying to get them to say a swear word. Oh, like Wario... Oh. <laughs> Actually, let me talk about that for a second. So, when I was young, and when I first played Mario Kart 8, um... When you select Wario, um, he says, uh, he says cheater like, CHEATER! And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I always thought he said cheater. <laughs> it sounded like he said a swear when he selected him. And it's like, I thought about that for so years and I realized, and I was like, oh! And then when I finally got Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in like 2018 on my Switch, I was like, I was like, oh, he's saying 
cheater. <laughs> or, or he may be saying cheater, so who knows? <laughs> That's just a funny, funny memory. Something occurred. Yeah, something occurs to you that you've been doing this for, ten, for at least 10 minutes and you haven't seen or heard from Mio at all. Getting up to look for her, you search nearly the entire house before you, before you find her on the balcony. As you step outside, she doesn't look up. Instead, her gaze is a thousand miles away. And for a time, she... stands quiet. Wait a minute, how do you even get out? I can... You know, I always fall too hard, too fast. I always let my heart get away from me. No matter how many times it happens, my heart sort of autopilots. I jump into relationships too quickly. And it all ends the same. You'd think I would eventually learn, <laughs> but I don't. You. Others. Lots of others. Sorry. I saw who was calling you. I didn't mean to peek. I saw you with her. Last week, I was having a drink with a friend and saw you in the restaurant. She's pretty. I think I've seen her at the mall. Super confident. <laughs> Way more than I am. get hurt much too easily. You're free to be with whomever you want. It's not like we made this exclusive. I understand. The real problem is me. You see, I... I don't actually mind if this thing between us is just like... a fling or something. I'm down for just having fun and keeping it simple. It's just that... I genuinely don't know what I'm supposed to do, or how I'm supposed to feel. Because, no matter what, I wind up getting my heart broken. Love and intimacy has always been really confusing for me. I feel like, no matter what I do, people think less of me for my decisions. Even if my decisions wind up being opposite each other day to day. I really enjoy sex. I love getting naked and being silly. I love touching, and kissing, and hugging, and flirting, and I suppose that's led me to jump into bed with people too quickly. The world tells me not to be so easy and promiscuous, but when I resist those desires, the world turns around and tells me not to be so cold. So I try not to let the world choose how I feel, and just go for what makes me happy. Then, I don't know. I wind up lonely, or harassed, or put down, or unsatisfied. I'm basically confused and self-conscious all the time. And... I'm afraid. I know how you feel. Yeah? That's good. I was hoping you might. So, I'm not dense. I know that I fall too hard for people too fast. I know that I should be a little more careful. But I keep having the same... dream, I guess? That I'll find someone who feels the same way I do. And we'll click. And it'll be like things finally fit together. As dumb as that sounds, I feel like I might be... hopeless. 
And with that comes this cloud of doubt, anxiety, and pressure that this might be the time I finally get it right. And then I get it wrong, and everything shatters, and everything hurts. It just makes me want to cut everything away, and go somewhere, and put my heart in a box, and hide it in my closet. Then a week goes by, and I meet someone new, and my roller coaster starts all over again. It sucks, and it hurts. Then it begins to rain like a shower turning on. The water starts falling straight down in buckets. The rain seems to break Nina's stair. There's something about the rain that changes her before your eyes. Her sadness is clear. Will you come for a walk with me? I don't suppose you've got a parasol or something. <laughs> yeah, I've got an umbrella. Come with me in the rain. Mia digs for an umbrella and her closet and the two of you head out into the rain. For a while you just walk around the city. The rain is transformed. Everything. It drips from me and puddles on the sidewalk. There are, no, there are no other rolls of thunder, and the drone of rain makes it feel like the rest of the world fades away. Then, and only then, oh. I feel like I don't understand other people. On the internet, people get mad at me for showing myself and they get mad when i don't they get mad at me when i play games and tell me to stop pretending who i am they get mad at me for doing my makeup for dressing in cosplay for talking about shows i like they get mad at me for trying to get attention and if i don't try to get their attention and the truth is i just want people to like me. Whether it's because I'm attractive, or funny, or interesting, whatever. I just want to figure out other people, and be liked. I feel like I worry a lot about what people think of me when I'm out of the room. What they say about me when I'm not on screen. It's not that I crave attention. I'm just bad at this. Being a friend. A partner. Being intimate, being sure of myself. I spend every day being bad at the things I try, and not being sure I like the things I like. Not knowing if I know anyone at all. When everything seems to make things worse, you wind up not knowing how to make anything better. to tell you something and I don't know how you're going to react but I want to say it out loud and then I want to change can you promise to hear the whole thing I promise thank you in my live streams I've been selling myself Holding auctions and doing what bidders want me to do. Like a cam girl, I guess. For a long time, I didn't really see anything wrong with it. I was consenting. They were consenting. I kept my identity secret. But lately, I've realized that... <laughs> I'm just so lonely. I don't want to do this stuff anymore. 
But I'm so addicted to being desired. I want people to want me so bad. But it's become so terrible. Like I'm losing myself in it. And now... It's come to... It's come to something even worse. There's a fan who's learned my identity. And they want to pay me to have sex with them. An enormous, insane amount of money. Anything I want, if they can have me. And what do you want? I don't want any of this. I want people to stop talking about my body. To stop trashing the things I like. I just want to be happy. I want you. I want to tear down all the things making me sad. I want to stop the streaming, the auctions, the secret life. I need to tell this person, who I've allowed to become obsessed with me, that I am not the person they think I am. Because I don't want to be that person anymore. And I don't know if I can do it. But for the first time, when I'm with you, I feel like I can try. So if you want to be with other people, if you don't want me, please just tell me right now. I promise I won't hate you. I promise you don't have to worry about anything I've told you tonight. But if you're here, I need you. I need you more than I can even tell you. So tell me, with everything I've just told you, are you with me? You know me, when I make a promise. You... keep it. <sighs> when I make a promise. You can count on me. I can't help it. <laughs> I already am. A few moments later. Damn it! <laughs> well, I'll just explain what happened then. Dorian bribed for 50 grand and uh, told me to break it off with L. Nah, bitch. I'm going to save her. And it'll be the last thing I do. And now to finish off the chapter force. Oh. I was driving home, the storm, the storm is rearing up again. A roll of thunder overhead promises that lightning is near, and the wind is blowing hard enough to topple trees. Judging by the street lamps and the lack of lightning from any house, any of the houses, you guess that the power must be out. Sure enough, when you reach your house, you don't see any lights on, but something else strikes you as a miss. It's not until you're at the front that you realize what it is. The front door is open. You flip 
the lights vanish and just be stirred. The lights stay dark. You call off your quill, but there's no answer. As you quickly inspect the house, you almost step into a pile of broken glass. You feel you kneel down for a closer look and it appears to be the remains of a cup. <laughs> you call for Krill again. More desperate this time, but only the thunder answers. Now you're running to room to room, calling for Quill, frantically searching for any evidence she's home. When you stumble upon her in the kitchen, you find her sitting on the floor, her legs tucked to her chest. It's rocking back and forth with her hands pulling her head. Oh no, 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 no! No, please! Shh! Before you can see anything, lightning strikes, lightning, lighting the entire house like daylight furnace. No, no, don't make a sound. Stay small, stay quiet. You reach over and flip the switch in the, for the kitchen light just in case the power comes back on. Then decide to sweep up the broken glass in the other room. When you return, Cole hasn't moved from her spot. And she's and she still hasn't shown any signs. She, she knows you're you're there. Shh, shh, quiet, quiet, be quiet. Please, no more. <coughs> Quill hides her face for a few moments, sobbing and gasping in the hell. Surprisingly, Quill doesn't smirk, doesn't shrink or recoil from you touching your, her head. In fact, she stops rocking, and the sensation seems to calm her a little bit. She makes a soft rolling sound, so her eyes so close with anxiety. Find something to eat. Reaching above your head, you pull a, you pull a banana off the counter. We can eat it. Although, although Quill doesn't open her eyes to look at you, she becomes still. You hear her stomach growl. <laughs> Those are yucky. Kitties prefer tuna. Take a quick look in the cupboard and find a can of tuna. In fact, you find 20. Searching through the kitchen drawers, you're unable to find a can opener until Quill points to a small drawer in the kitchen island. And inside, you find five can openers, all designed with various kitty paws. You open the can, drain the water, and hand the can to Quill. She holds it in front of her for a few moments, not moving, until finally opening one of her eyes. She looks around the room and asks, Are, are the loud noises all gone for the day? So loud! So loud! I have to run! It's not safe. You're not entirely sure why, but you try 
running her fingers through Quill's hair and then lifting the kitty ears off her head. This has a surprising effect on Quill, who suddenly becomes calm and looks at you curiously. On a pure whim, you take the kitty ears and put them on yourself. Oh, I see. It's your turn to be a kitty. To your surprise, Quill stretches her legs out and pats. Okay, kitty, come here. Mama loves you. You do as she has, trying closer, and she gently guides you to lay your head in her lap. Once you relax, she begins to pet you, running her fingers through your hair. Hmm. It is quite unexpectedly very relaxing and extremely intimate. The thunder can't hurt you. It's just the lightning yelling up a fuss. Most noises can't hurt you, even though they're very loud. But there are some noises you should get away from, so it's okay to hide if you need to. Just don't hide forever. Where's the best place to hide? It's best to get home quickly. Home is the best place to be when you're happy or scared. And don't be afraid to ask for help. There are some problems a kitty can't solve. Now, just so you know, the kinds of bad people who use loud noises when they hurt other people, they're usually not going to hurt a kitty. They usually only hurt other people. Even though, sometimes it's good people they want to hurt. Those kinds of things are hard to talk about. You can tell me I'm a good kitty for keeping secrets. Quill stares blankly for a moment, as though coming to a decision. There's a bad person outside somewhere. The sound of thunder. It reminds me of the sound that killed my friend. I was waiting for him. In the alleyway. He was looking for someone. Other girls, he told me. Like me. Girls he needed to protect. So I brought him to the place I had seen someone in trouble. A sad girl. Very lonely. She wasn't a kitty, but she was definitely cute enough to be one. But while I was waiting for him... What happened? Someone came into the alley. And killed my friend. I was hiding behind a bin. But I peeked around just in time. And a bad man... Go bang! And my friend's head... And there was blood. It was so horrible. And I ran away. Another bad man there. And I remember there were metal and glass eyes looking down at me. That's all I can remember. There were security cameras looking at you? Yes, those things! They looked like those round, gooey things. Pizza! They look like pizza. I think that's all I remember. As you're trying to decide if you ask any more questions, suddenly the lights come back on. Oh good! The buzzy lights are back. I wonder why they went to sleep. Okay, I'm ready to be kitty again. I'm hungry, and I'm going to eat some tuna. Okay. Thank you for making me feel better. Cool, it's a face. And hops up. Hops up off the floor. <laughs> She takes a cane of tuna. 
into the kitchen, into the living room and sprawls out on the couch to eat it. Soon she's watching another documentary on jaguars and eating gobs of tuna with her hand. Not entirely sure what to make of Quill's story. But if her face was caught on camera, then the people who murdered her friend might very well know what she looks like. You decide your best bet is to get in contact with Fumi and see if she can provide more insight to the information. For now, you sit on the couch, take a pinch of tuna from Quill's can. <laughs> get your own fishies! Oops. There is no more thunder tonight, but the storm roars on. Well. Here we go. The end of the story is now. But not now. Next time. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please do make sure to leave a like. Comment down below if you enjoy this content. And see what you... And... Comment down below which, what other kind of crappy visual novel you want me to see. Not this one, because Hush Hush is a great visual novel. But, um, yeah, just comment down below if, if there's any other game you want me to do. And, uh, if this happens to be the first video you've seen by me, please do consider hitting subscribe. It would definitely grow this channel immensely. And if you're, but, duh, if you're an existing subscriber, do share this video with your friends anywhere. And, um, and, uh, follow my friend Shiro Gogo on Twitter. Um, he makes some, uh, some interesting art, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, uh, he will be my th new thumbnail artist, and, uh, can't be any more glad to have him on something like this. So, thank you, Shiro Gogo, for being a part of me as of the home stretch for Hush Hush, and thank you everybody so much for watching again, and I'll see you all next time as we end Hush Hush.